the great void in the dark there is the path to rebirth a period of not knowing in the womb of the divine mother prepare for the night of destiny leading to the light I have some cards laid out here and this is going to be a divine update I'm skipping the introduction and I'm going right into the messages before we pull any new cards we will Move into the introduction, call on some help, but as of now, I must urge and remind that this is a period where there will be a feeling of not knowing, a feeling of the period of time when you're in the womb no one knows the exact time when that which is triggered to move forward into life into light but that period of not knowing before the trigger is a value. We're starting off with the sun and the hanged man. <clears throat> the sun and the hanged man, Leo energy representing the sun and Neptune energy representing the hanged man Pisces Leo the hanged man represents the number 12 which breaks down to three balance something feeling off balance, not seeing things clear, the mist, the illusion, the matrix. This could represent a circumstance, a feeling, an entity, a person. Neptunian energy lends itself to a Piscean energy. In this image, we have a woman with a, a flower, looks like an orchid, um, as a veil in front of the face. Upright, the hangman represents clarity it represents a releasing, a certain freedom, an aha moment where the veil has been lifted and there is a releasing of a certain way of perceiving something, letting go, releasing it all to the divine, making space for what's to come, clarity. And here we have the sun. It's in reverse. Now, what I'm getting here with these two cards is that there is something that is not being seen clearly. There's a feeling of being in the dark. 
maybe getting a download, getting a premonition of what's to come, but not having a clear timeline, not perceiving, not seeing the potential of what has been laid before you. This could represent an individual, again, an entity, a being, a person, a circumstance that is stuck in illusions, that is not seeing outside of themselves. This could represent selfishness. This could represent um, a depression of sorts, self-doubt, unanswered questions, fears failures. But for me, what I'm seeing is that this is a period of darkness. Darkness does not always equate to evil or lack. Because within the darkest of places is where you can truly find light answers, truth. So a period of not knowing, a period of being in the darkened divine womb of the mother, there will be some answers that may not be clear. A waiting of sorts. As we move into a period of enlightenment, I do not take these two inverted cards as negative at all. It could be for some. It's all about perspective. It's all about perception. depth perception. Everything is aligned the way that it should be. After pulling these two cards, the sun, the hangman in reverse, we have death, the wheel of fortune, and the hermit. Scorpio, Sagittarius, Virgo, respectively. Pluto or Mars, Jupiter, Mercury. Everything is aligning as it should. You may not see where things are headed at this time, particularly with Mercury, the planet of communication electricity, electronics, technology, forward movement. In retrograde, in the sign of Scorpio. Depending on where Scorpio is in your chart, what house, this could affect everyone differently. For myself, with Scorpio being in the 12th house, um, Uranus being in my 12th house. There's a, a, a square, I believe, happening with um, Uranus, but with Uranus being in my 12th house, house along with Scorpio and Mercury being retrograde. I would experience it being the 12th house as a planet of secrets, spirituality, hidden depths I would perceive it as a period of reevaluating 
all things Uranus. Uranus is the Lord of Aquarius, reevaluating what I perceive as my truths, my spirituality, what I'm passionate about, how I move forward with revolutionary thoughts, actions, feelings, the mysteries, the unknown. And how I communicate these truths, these feelings. It's different for everyone. But again, a period of darkness, of uncertainty, with Mercury retrograde in Scorpio, communication, feeling foggy. We have Scorpio, this is death. Rebirth, regeneration, the snake eating itself. life, experience, death, on repeat, cycles, okay, laying down your sword, releasing it all to the divine, awakenings, whether it's literal, whether it's figurative, it's releasing, is removing the mind from the process and allowing the divine to work not really caring whether the process is literal or figurative it's a total and utter release okay again we have Scorpio energy here Mars Pluto Mars is retrograde in Aries Scorpio, Mercury, retrograde in Scorpio. Okay, Mars is the original ruler of Scorpio. Of course, Pluto uh, comes into effect. Um, the planet of revolution, restriction, power. So all of the Scorpio energy with Scorpio being retrograde, uh, Mercury being retrograde in Scorpio. Um, there is this feeling of not knowing, not knowing how to express how to delegate what one is feeling on a deep, deep emotional level in relation to actions, in relation to Communication, releasing, fighting for what you believe in, and how you go about the fight. Is it full on war or is it picking your battles? That's what Mercury. And Scorpio is asking of us right now. It's almost a laying down of the sword and it's allowing a process to happen. Mind you, all of this is leading to a new moon in Libra. The sun is currently in Libra. And we'll be making a transition into Scorpio. Again, there's something that we have to wait on. 
something that's not quite clear. Release it all to the process. Because everything is aligning as it should. We have Sagittarius energy here, Jupiterian energy. Jupiter is the Lord and ruler of Sagittarius. And this is about expansion. This is about knowledge, wisdom, cycles, forward movement. The Wheel of Fortune is about good fortune. It's about everything coming full circle on a path, enlightenment, prosperity, abundance. Allow the process to happen. Allow the darkness to envelope. And allow what is birthing to be birthed. It's all about divine time. Again, you can know the parts and the players, and you can know certain aspects of the play, but no one can know the ending before the time. So it's about flow and it's about letting things come full circle. Everything is aligned as it should. Allow this time of unknowing and darkness to enfold you. Allow the mist and the shade to envelope you. Allow yourself to be encompassed by the not knowing for a period. Which leads us to the hermit. This is the divine overall faded energy, death, the will of fortune, and the hermit. Pluto, Mars, Jupiter, and Mercury. This is Virgo energy, and it's all about going within the energy of number nine. Okay, nine is a very divine number. It's, it's truth. It's pure, undulterated truth, and it's pure darkness. It's silence. It's where you find the truth. It's where you find the peace, the heaven, the sacred, going within. Now is the time to go within. Now is the time to work on self. Now is the time to know thyself, to review, to go over everything with this Virgo energy. Um, right now, currently, we are in a Virgo moon phase leading into the new moon and Libra tomorrow. Today is the 15th. This is, I'm talking Eastern time. So depending on where you are, that could be different. But again, everything is as it should be. You are in the womb of the Divine Mother. And there are certain things that you are not supposed to know. You will find the truth when the time is right, when the sun makes its move as of noun. Mercury is retrograde in 
the sign of darkness. The depths of Pluto Scorpio. So all of the answers will not be privy to you during this period. The universe is asking you to go within. Shine the light on yourself, on your truth. It's the nine energy divine, divine timing, divine protection, divine justice, cosmic justice. Know thyself. Solitude. Introspection. Enlightenment in, 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 go within reflection. Now is the time for reflection. You must look inward for truth and wisdom, for you have all the knowledge you need inside. Be calm and reflective. Do not let the outside world distract you from the messages you hold within. This is what Mercury is wanting for you during this time. So do not let these inverted cards disturb you, disturb your peace. You are light. But the universe is requiring this darkness during this period. It is highly significant for the cycle that's about to come. So here we have Pluto, Mars, Jupiter, Mercury, Death, Wheel of Fortune, Hermit, all upright. Yes, it is perfect timing to release People are awakening. The wheel is turning. Go within. Rest. Prepare. Reflect. Be enlightened. For the truth in the sun is coming. The mist will be lifted. Mercury is retrograde. Mercury and Scorpio. Conversations will center on reviewing past hurts. And there could be some bringing up of mud, you know, earth, water, Scorpio. And all the things that we attach ourselves to on this earthly plane. Earth. Earth, water, m earth equals mud. Mud can be slung when the emotions aren't clear. So this can lead to negative feelings, nastiness, misunderstanding, sarcasm, and negativity but do not get distracted. Everything is a way, is aligned in a way that is perfect. Divine timing. Hermit, go within. All of this is happening on the precipice of the new moon in Libra tomorrow, Friday, October 16th. And this new moon is coming at a perfect time to counteract any conflicts you could be having. 
any confusion that you may be experiencing. The new moon is the darkest point of the lunar month. And it's time to prepare for the seedlings to be harvested for the moment in time that no one knows when the fetus is in the womb and the labor pains begin for a rebirth, for a new cycle, for a new way. Four, balance, okay? The sun is in Libra and many are seeking that balance and that clarity. Again, a period of darkness is upon us and it is exactly the way the universe desires it to be. This is a time to focus on what you have already planted to finalize contracts, to finalize contracts, to work on um, things that you've already started, healing of yourself, healing of your relationships, partnerships, deep-seated emotions. Take the challenges that come as opportunities to heal and to regenerate before the full moon in Taurus. Again, Reflecting vanity deflection, the mirror spirit. This is the Mercury retrograde in Scorpio. The spirit of the mirror and the spirit of the fog. Unclear confusion, shadiness. Okay, that's the mudslinging. That's the deep emotions all right, that are coming up from the past. Attachments, attachments, earth, earth and water, mud, right? Remember who you are. Align yourself with people who are going to uplift you, not bring you down. Do not get distracted. Do not get lost. Remember that you are light, even if you are surrounded in darkness, with darkness. Reflect, okay? Reflect. There could be feelings um, that come up in regards to your shadow in respect to vanity, maybe even deflecting or having other people deflect their feelings onto you. But this is what this Mercury retrograde in Scorpio is all about. And it's all about releasing. Releasing. Death, rebirth. Hang on tight. Throughout this dark period, nothing will be the same. Everything is aligned the way it should be. The wheel of fortune is turning in your favor. The spirit of the staircase. Okay, there will be enlightenment. There is a portal opening up. You can release this umbrella. This red umbrella represents the root chakra, okay? It represents the 3D. It represents everything that you felt you had to stand under to protect yourself. You're letting it go because there's ascension and progress and the long way home. This is the spirit of the staircase. This is all about ascension. All right. This period of darkness is leading to the light.
spirit of the shoreline. Okay, calm, tranquil, relaxing. The sun is coming. The truth is coming. Answers are coming. Enlightenment is coming on the other side of reflection. Spirit of travel, journey, relocation, moving on, planting the seeds for a new way, for a new beginning. After this period of darkness, of reflection, going within, there will be travel, a new way, a new earth, a new beginning. On a smaller scale, Just releasing the past. New opportunities, new destinations, new journeys on whatever scale or capacity in family, in career. Your purpose. But there is a moving on and some type of travel that is taking place after a period of darkness. Which is leading to the key. Okay, the spirit of the key, solutions, wisdom, spiritual knowledge. Unlocking DNA, unlocking codes that it's going to bring solutions and truth again ascension connection with the higher realms higher knowledge And what you didn't know, what you can't know fully and completely, but what you feel at the core of your being, the shoreline can be seen and the sun is revealing, revealing, revel in the truth, revelation. What was hidden shall be clear. The mist is lifting. Sacred union within yourself. within soul contracts that you've made with others, your soul tribe, healing family issues, and leading to this beautiful, beautiful energy of unions and soul tribe and family and building the temples, healing in a whole new way, we have signs. Throughout this dark period, throughout this time, you are being urged by the divine to pay attention to all signs, all synchronicities. There will be signs in the stars, in the sky, all around you.
I'm gonna pull a couple clarifiers for this beautiful, beautiful energy, for this divine update. Before we move forward, I'm gonna just call on some help. I always call on help before I pull any cards, but this energy was pulled before I record it. So as I pull new cards, I'm going to call on help of all of um, my guides, my angels, my way showers, my ancestors, um, all knowing source, divine spirit, archangels, Raphael of air to my east, archangel Michael of fire to my south, archangel Gabriel of water to my west, archangel Uriel of earth to my north, on the vertical plane, archangel Sandalon, and archangel Metatron, all of my archangels, way showers, guardian angels who are with me, ascended masters, fighting above, ancestors, fighting above, allow me to be the channel to bring forth truthful, clear, and precise messages for the collective, allow me to tap into the energy of the collective and to bring forth the most important and the most daily messages for those who need them the most. Thank you so much. Before we move forward, we're going to read the divine oracle message and end with tarot and one oracle guidance card for this divine message. We have Layla. Layla. Put aside your clever schemes, O oh lover. Be mindless. Become mad. Dive into the heart of the flame. Become fearless. Be like a moth. Turn away from the self and tear down the house. Then come and dwell in the house of love. Be a lover. Live with lovers. Clean your chest from all hostility. Wash it seven times. Then fill it with the wine of love. Be a chalice for love. Be a chalice. You must be all love to be worthy of the beloved. When going to the gathering of drunks, be a drunk, become drunk. Your thoughts take a course, dragging you in its wake. Move beyond the thought, let your heart lead, be the leader. When the grace of love is revealed, be a mirror to reflect it. When the beloved's hair is loosened, brush it like a comb, be a comb. How I long for my thoughts to no longer make any sense to me. Then I can be rid of them like noisy house guests who have overstayed their welcome. Oh, the peace when they finally go. Their insistent chatter brings me no comfort. I crave the silence of you. Will you let me hear it? Will you run through the noisy house of my mind with your great muddy feet so that I can focus on something other than my mind for a while? Maybe you can make such a mess that I shall give up my plans and attempts at order completely. Just give in for a change. It's time for that, to give up my ridiculous fantasies of perfection. I'd rather just be alive. I want to plant my head in the earth in the same mud that sticks to your feet and breathe in her rich soil smell. I want to feel her heart heating. I want to feel the heat. I want to feel her heart beating in the quiet movements of the roots of the plants as they stretch and grab and stop my ears with her fertile dirt. Finally, gaining peace from the constant infernal racket of thoughts no longer wanted. Oh, beloved, how you are to be envied. You are being given the gift of no self, no noise, no sense. The great beloved truly wants you to be closer than ever to the wild universal heart in that field of love. Every electronic device goes haywire. Systems collapse, worlds collide, 
and great stars are born from the chaos. But this, the real you will sense none of this. You'll be staring at your beloved, so intoxicated by love. Your tongue will loll out of your mouth and you'll drool like a bloodhound and you won't care a hoot. Neither will the great beloved. Such will the passion of your reunion be that the only thing to matter will be the one great love exploding inside your being. So who cares if you have no idea what day it is? What was your job supposed to be again? Or how to make conversation, let alone intelligent conversation at the dinner table? Oh, well, you shall not be yourself anymore. You shall not be so appropriate or sociable. Who understands crazy words that fall out of your mouth, unchecked by logic or rationality? I do. I know the beloved too. I am under that same loving spell. I, like you, have no I anymore. I, like you, am so crazy with love that I care not for things making sense anymore. I, like you, long for my night of love with the great beloved. That ends me forever and renders me only and ever the lover of the great beloved. I call that night forward from my love crazed heart as you do. The night of destiny. Let us run together and pound on the bedroom of the door of the great beloved. There is no shame. There is nothing else worth holding on to. Let us go now and throw ourselves upon the good will of the creator. Our hair shall be messy and mingle with the curving galaxy and the planets shall grow rings around them becoming the many eyes of the great beloved, delightfully bearing witness to our loving, passionate surrender. This oracle brings you a message. You are moving through a period of not knowing, of time in the great void or womb of the Divine Mother. It is the place the seed can crack open and take root. This cannot happen in the light where all is seen and recognized. It must happen under the cover of darkness where only trust can assure one of success. This is the way of nature, the way of life, and it must be honored. This oracle brings you ancient wisdom. It guides you not to fear the darkness, but to enter into it willingly. It is not for you to become lost, but to find your way. This oracle is saying that in the darkness, there is the path. Do not turn away from it. Let it be. Be with the lack of knowing. When people ask of you so many questions and demand sensible answers to support their notion of reality, do not bow to such unworthiness and fear. Know that their minds may be fearful for your safety and their own. Lest your divine madness be contagious, but that their fear is nothing to you. Nothing at all. It is not even anything to them. But they just don't know that yet. Under the sacred black cloak of night, the divine mother, the goddess, the she who transfigures from darkness into light, has invited you into her chamber. In that place, you shall experience exhilaration, but only that of which is untrue, that of which would hold you back, dampen your spirit or prevent you from bursting into full aliveness. For that which is true is already seated deep in your womb and is preparing to be born strong and with good powerful legs. So when it is time, it will leap like a wild creature, all instinct and intuition into the morning light. For this moment, however, there is darkness and that is essential for the appearance. So eminent, beloved of the light on its way. This oracle brings you guidance. If you find yourself to be sad, 
to be grieving, whether you know for what or not, or even depressed or struggling. Feeling as though you are being pulled down, do not fight. Bear witness instead. Allow what is taking place to take place. Allow what is happening to happen. You shall find a joy in allowing the interplay of darkness and the light to take place according to a greater unfolding rhythm of your own divine growth process. Say aloud, I honor the darkness that serves the all loving light. I am blessed with growth of my soul into life, even within the darkest of dark places. The divine beloved dwells with unfailing generosity and compassion. In my surrender, I am held and in my darkness, the seed of new life takes root. And so it is. If you find yourself to be sad, to be grieving, whether you know for what or not, or even depressed or struggling, feeling as though you are being pulled down, do not fight, bear witness instead. Allow what is taking place to take place. Allow what is happening to happen. You shall find joy in allowing the interplay of darkness and the light to take place according to a greater unfolding rhythm of your own divine growth process. Do not fight what you cannot see at this time. Everything is happening as it should. Allow the death process, the darkness to happen. Everything is happening as it should. This is a period of reflection. You will find your way through the darkness and into your light. Mercury, Jupiter. Pluto, Mars. The sun. You may feel tired during this period. You may feel um, yourself going through ascension symptoms and things of that nature. All right. Again, reflection. Do not allow others to deflect what they feel onto you. This is a period where there is a murkiness. Do not get lost. Remember who you are. Remember your light in this darkness. There may be fog. Okay uncertainty, confusion, shadiness. But that is leading to ascension, a portal of light, travel, a release, a new way, a journey, a moving on. Wisdom, higher knowledge, solutions, ascension keys, okay? Enlightenment. The shoreline is near. The sun is coming. There is healing, union, and balance on its way. Pay attention to the signs. Any additional messages, please. Clarity. For this divine message what is death what is death What is death, please?
we have the nine of wands. The nine of wands, okay. The wounded warrior. I do know that, um, I believe today, Chiron is retrograde in Aries. There is this wounded warrior aspect that's going on. Also, Mars is retrograde in Aries. All right, this came out in reverse. So, again, this is all about not allowing what is not being seen or felt or clear to you to distract you, to throw you off course, to have other people deflect their fears onto you, to cause paranoia, to um, cause doubt within you. This is all about remembering who you are in the face of darkness. Death card is about facing your shadow. It's about using this time to integrate and to face yourself, parts of yourself, parts of others, to heal, to release, to awaken, to transmute, okay? And remaining powerful of the truth of who you are and to not give up, to be steadfast. But again, with Scorpio being retrograde, it's also about being mindful of your actions, okay? Nine of Wands is Sagittarius energy, and it's all about acting. It's all about fire, passion, forward movement, um, battle. When you win a battle, um, you take over land and you continue to grow and expand. But during the Mercury retrograde, it's a time to just allow, to allow the darkness to be, to gain the wisdom that you can gain from that darkness, but to be very mindful of your actions and um moving into uncharted uncharted territory but all the while using that kind of wounded warrior pain to harness some type of creative creative um energy for future for movement right now with Mercury retrograde, it's a time to to heal, to focus on what has happened in preparation for future movements, okay? Staying steadfast, staying in your faith, being persistent, having great faith during a period of darkness not allowing fear to overtake you, not allowing paranoia to cause you to act in a way that you may regret at a later date. Again, remember, there is a period where the Divine Mother is holding you in a sacred space. And that sacred space is feeling a bit dark right now because, again, there are some things that are not clear. There may be individuals in your environment or circumstances that may be elusive, that may be dark, uh, casting a dark shadow, a mist, confusion, selfishness. But you're being urged to be patient, to have great faith in this phase of not knowing. 
and prepare for future actions. Now is not the time to act, okay? Clarify the Wheel of Fortune. Clarify the Wheel of Fortune, please. <laughs> and we have the Empress. The Empress. Everything is what it should be. Again, Jupiterian energy, Sagittarius energy. The Wheel of Fortune is all about good karma. Right now, Jupiter is going direct in Capricorn. And um, things are as they should be. The wheel is turning in your favor. There is a divine plan at work. Again, in all of these pictures, we have a sun, all right, that is rising, that is coming. Everything is aligning. The Empress is three energy, and this is about balance. This is about divine feminine energy. This is protection. This is divine protection. Again, divine timing. This is all about the harvest. Okay, with the Empress, we do have Libra and Taurus energy. Very Venusian energy. So it's all about an alignment that's happening. And it's all happening as it should. So far on the board, we have Pluto, Mars, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Neptune, the Sun. Okay. We also have the Moon. Everything is aligning. And everything is moving toward balance and sacred union. What appears to be darkness on the other side, there is light, there is sacred union. The Empress energy, again, Libra, Taurus, Divine Feminine. And um, this is about harvest. We have the new moon that is um, happening tomorrow. Planting the seeds, being very fruitful, being very balanced. Manifestation. Powerful manifestation energy. Be mindful of your thoughts, your words, your actions. Manifestation is happening at a very, very rapid pace, even if you're not seeing it right now. Again, there is a period that will appear dark before the sun returns. So the Empress is clarifying the Wheel of Fortune. Everything is as it should be. Everything is coming full circle. Divine feminine energy. Healing. Abundance. Here again, we have masculine and feminine energies. Masculine and feminine energies aligning. Attraction. Lots of unions happening. Okay, this is about 
purpose. Masculine and feminine energies coming together for a greater purpose. Okay, Jupiter masculine, Empress feminine, attraction, manifestation, union. And lastly, clarify the hermit, Mercury energy. Okay, and we have the world. I'm sorry, we have the Ten of Cups. The Ten of Cups in reverse. The Ten of Cups in reverse. So, again, this is just talking about what appears to be unclear, what appears to be hidden. Feelings of self-doubt, shaking off circumstances, individuals, entities that feel entitled, selfishness, parts of yourself, shadow aspects of yourself that need to be released. All of this is what is pertinent and important during this period of darkness before the sun comes, before the light period emerges. All right. And that's where the Ten of Cups come into play. Clarifying the Hermit. Reflection, reflection, reflection. Throughout this um, Mercury retrograde and Scorpio. Where there will be a lot of feelings of uncertainties, fog, confusion. Dealing with energies of reflection and deflection looking at ourselves closely, healing parts of ourselves, releasing, detaching. A period of darkness where you may feel as though you are letting go of things that are hard to release, okay? Family. Relationships. Careers. Things that you are emotionally attached to that are no longer serving your greatest and highest good. Healing of old wounds. Forgiveness of past hurts. Childhood wounding. Trauma. Taking a deep look at ourselves. Because again, Hermit Nine Energy. And it's all about divine timing, divine justice, silence. And again, the Hermit is mercurial energy, it's Virgo energy. It's all about service. How are you serving yourself? How are you healing yourself? How are you looking deeply at yourself to find out how you got to this place and time and space? Solitude is what the divine is asking of us all during this period. And how we communicate with others as these things come up for us for review during this Mercury retrograde, okay, um, people who have um, a lot of placements in Libra, Scorpio, Virgo, maybe even Gemini, Pisces, Leo, Sagittarius could really be feeling this Mercury retrograde um, in a very deep way. Deep healing, forgiveness, compassion. A lot of deep-seated
issues coming up for review. All right, so at any rate, a lot of deep reflection and um, healing, looking at oneself and reconnecting with um, your, your intuition, your subconscious, and allowing some things to be released. Again, Ten of Cups in reverse is all about wounds, old wounds, deep wounds, emotional wounds, and um, a cleaning out of that gunk in order to make space for what is to truly come. Broken relationships, issues revolving around neglect, feeling incomplete, misaligned, so that you can move into your abundance your true happiness and fulfillment. Okay, and we're gonna just, um an oracle here a couple of oracles to end our reading some of divine advice please for the collective again I can't stress enough that is important this is a, t a time of rest um, a period of introspection and reflection I mean, so many cards on reflection and introspection. Pay attention to the signs. If you look back on some of my um, divine updates or spirit sage readings, there will be a, a reading where I spoke about a prophetic dream where... I was coming through the birth canal, um, experiencing a rebirth, a literal experience of being born. Um, there is a detaching that is needed during this period. Um, I had a dream last night. I won't go too deep into it, but I lost everything I had. I was at the register preparing to pay, pay for something significant, um, I had nothing. Everything had been stolen, stripped from me. And at the very last moment, someone behind the counter started presenting to me everything that I had lost. So you have to understand that there is a period of darkness, there is a period of shedding, but you are going to find everything that you've lost and then some. Pay attention to the signs. Prepare to be held in the darkness of the Divine Mother. Open yourself up. Release it all to receive what it is that you're about to receive. Your birthright. True freedom. Divine advice. Accept what is dying. Accept what is dying. Any other advice? We're going to read from that one. I'm being led to read that one for you guys. Be decisive. Be decisive in what you allow in your life, what you cut out. Take this time while Mercury is in retrograde to really um, reflect on what is unclear. What is confusion, confusion in your life? And let it go. Now, more than ever, it's time to be decisive.
count your blessings. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. And your blessings, they are coming. In relation to the signs, I will be posting in the community um, tab a sign that I saw in the sky yesterday. And it's going to give hope to so many of us, okay? Any other divine messages? Claim your art. Claim your art. It's time to integrate your shadow. It's time to be there for your shadow. Your shadow never left you. Okay, it's time to merge your higher self, your divine sacred self with your, your shadow self. And it's time to transmute anything that's unhealed and use it for your creativity. Use it as your gold alchemy. From iron to bronze to silver to gold. Make no judgments. Make no judgments. Now is not the time to be judgmental. It's only a time to focus on yourself. If others are judgmental of you for focusing on yourself, then they need to be cut out. Be decisive and cut them out. Because focusing on yourself in solitude is not a selfish act. Okay? Acts the divine for discernment in your actions, your choices, your thoughts. Make no judgments of others. Do the work on self and that love and healing will emanate outwards. Bottom of the deck we have retreat. Can't make this up, okay? Retreat. Retreat. All right? It took a lot of energy to get up, um, to get forward and uh, to put this message out. Not because I didn't want to, only because I'm being divinely led to retreat. I'm being divinely led to accept what's dying. I'm being divinely led to let go, to heal, to work on self, to detach, to heal old wounds, to go within, and to release it all. Okay, so... Couple that with the Mercury retrograde and so many other um, planetary alignments that are happening right now. It's okay. It's okay to feel heavy. Many are dealing with ascension symptoms, DNA unlocking. Do not beat yourself up. Do what you can, especially if you are an empath or a light worker. And if you are someone who um, seeks a spiritual community to get answers, to get truth, do what needs to be done. Take the information that you gain, process it, go within, ask for discernment um, over it. Use it in a way that's best for you and then continue to look within. Retreat. Accept what is dying. Accept what is dying. Number 42, breaking down and reducing to the number six. Six electrons, six neutrons, six protons, six, six, six. Six is the number of choices. It's the number that represents the lovers. In the tarot, it's all about union, sacred union within yourself, 
union with others, okay? Um, again, the sun is in Libra. And Libra is all about relationships, healing relationships, bringing balance to relationships. Number six is all about examining your own motives when deciding which path to take, focusing on your own desires, equilibrium between two opposite sides, taking a risk, at taking inspired action after finding balance within yourself. Okay, so accept what is dying. Divine advice. An aspect of your life is clearly coming to an end. Some areas has lost your interest and you can no longer muster the enthusiasm to carry on. It is time to surrender and let things end with grace. Your divine energy is calling you to accept the natural cycles of life and death and directly admit what's presently ending in your life. Let go of sentimentality and be honest and frank in your assessment of things. Do not waste time tending to a garden that simply will not grow. It's time for a big change. Face the unknown with courage and confidence exciting and more beautiful things await your divine invitation understand that in every termination you're crossing the threshold of rebirth to another level rather than prolonging or denying what has ceased to bring life to your spirit accept the inevitable truth that the cycle for this connection has ended and consciously allow it to die naturally don't run from your emotions or deny your sorrow or fear. It's time to resign yourself to divine will and fully trust the normal rhythms of life and death. Remember, all that passes on is only in a state of becoming something new. That is universal law. Okay, this is very timely. And beautiful advice it goes right in law in line with this message okay death and rebirth everything is aligning as it should wheel of fortune jupiterian energy the hermit go within reflect 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 okay reflect on what is happening what is ending and what is beginning in your life remember that there will be a period of darkness and that is part of the divine plan for the new way this can represent entities or people in your existence that wish you to be in the dark that you know are holding on to the past that um are holding on to ego without truly facing it Again, I feel like this is definitely just representing a period of darkness where it's just not meant for you to know. No one knows the exact moment of birth. No one knows the exact ending. But this period of darkness is preparing you for something massive, all right? Something beautiful. Ascension. Revelation, travel, ascension keys, sacred union, healing, finding your tribe, your soul family, manifestation on the optimal level, all on the other side of releasing, okay, releasing healing, emotional wounds, and preparation for all that you're about to receive with this magnificent sacred rebirth. Pay attention to the signs. 
All right, and we're gonna end on one last oracle message. One last oracle. We have spring. We have metamorphosis. We have spring, which brings us to a timeline of March, April, May, which if you look at the last divine update, which speaks about a resting period for the chosen ones, the beginning is Aries season. The true beginning of a calendar year is Aries season. And this is all about spring. Okay. March, April, May. Where everything that we spoke about in this reading is going to cultivate into a new beginning. A beautiful new way after a surrendering process that happens. Communication. This is what I meant by Ascension Keys, by your soul tribe, your galactic family. What is coming is optimal expansion this is communication with the divine. This is angelic communication. This is, again, celestial communication. This is your galactic family. Okay. Um, again, ascension keys, codes, DNA being unlocked. And finally, metamorphosis. <laughs> Attraction. Healing. You see the healing waters? You see the butterflies? This is transformation, ultimate transformation, information. You know, information is stored in water. We're made up of 80% water. We are the crystals. We are the universe. This is a metamorphosis. Of metamorphosis is that's a word this is the ultimate more metamorphosis all right that is unfolding after this period of darkness so let it happen let it be experience it for what it is what you cannot see right now is a blessing beyond imagination let it be I hope that this message resonated with some of you and it was very helpful um healing know that i love you all keep your vibrations high now more than ever stay in your power do not get distracted remember who you are do not get lost operate in love never fear know that you were chosen you are made for this again Keep your vibrations high. Spread love wherever you go. And know that even in the twilight of the darkest and coldest night of December, remember that you'll be fine. There is nothing, nothing that can stop what is truly divine. Until next time.